Hey, greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West here, the Executive Director of the American Constitutional Rights Union and the ACRU Action Fund. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Live Free TV, where we talk about many of the pertinent issues to us today relating to the Constitution and making sure that we continue to protect your life, your liberty, your property, pursuit of happiness. You know, one of the things that I think we have to start paying attention to are our state legislatures, and especially our state legislatures in key battleground states. And in 2020, we saw a lot of unconstitutional actions that took place in these key battleground states where you had governors and secretaries of state and also judges that were changing election law. So recently, I spent some time up in Wisconsin, and I want to take the uh, moment to speak with one of the great state legislators that they have up there in Wisconsin, and that is Wisconsin State Representative Donna Rosar. Her, she was born in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. She's a graduate of the Virginia Baptist Hospital School of Nursing in 1971. She has a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from, yes, the University of Tennessee, 1981, a Master's of Science in Nursing from Viterbo University in 2008. She is a registered nurse, small business owner, residential and commercial rental property owner, former nurse and educator. She is a member of the Special Committee on State Tribal Relations, and she was elected to the Assembly in 2020. Thank you so much, Representative Rosar, for being with us. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation. You know, we uh, were up there and we talked about a lot of issues in your office, but I really want to focus on some of these election integrity issues because we've got a lot of lessons learned. And as I said, we saw some things that happened in battleground states to include in Wisconsin that we need to try to rectify before 2024. So what are some of the things that you all have been working on in the Wisconsin State Assembly or in the uh, legislature overall when it comes to election integrity? Well, uh, I appreciate this opportunity to talk about some of the things that we've been trying to do. Uh, you know, we have a divided government in Wisconsin. And so after the 2020 election, we tried to implement some legislation that did a few things, but those bills were vetoed by our governor. So we have tried, um, I think the major thing that really, really bothered a lot of people was the private money, we called them the Zuckerberg, the Zuckerberg dollars. Yes. I think you're familiar with that. We had millions of dollars come into our state. And, you know, they want to say, well, you know, a lot, of, a lot of municipalities got that money, which is true. But five municipalities in the state of Wisconsin got the majority of that money. And that money, I truly believe in my heart of hearts, went to communities where they could increase the Democratic vote. And a lot of things were done to bring out that Democratic vote. Now, I believe that there probably are ballots that show all of those voters but there was no doubt in anybody's mind that those that the majority of those monies went to those five communities to increase the voter turnout of uh, Democrats. So we passed a bill uh, after in the last legislative session to prohibit those kind of monies from coming into our state. That bill was vetoed by our governor. So we had a second consideration constitutional amendment resolution come before our state legislature. So in Wisconsin, you have to have a resolution passed two consecutive legislative sessions, and then it goes on the ballot for consideration of the the voters. So yeah. in April of 24, there will be a ballot initiative prohibiting private funds in elections. That question will be put before the voters. And if that if that um, ballot initiative passes, that will become part of our Constitution, which mm -hmm. then, you know, bypasses the possibility of the governor vetoing that legislation. Yeah. And so you hate to have to go to those measures because you have a governor that's not signing what you think is very good legislation for yeah. election integrity. So that is one of the things that we are trying to do now. Some of the opposition to that has been, 
well, why do you think these communities are taking these funds? They need those funds to buy hand sanitizer. I mean, whatever they want to say. I'm just telling you what the objection is. So we do need to make sure that we adequately give the money to the municipalities that they truly need to um, put on elections. So we're going to look at that. Well, you know, it's interesting because not too far away from you in Ohio, we just saw a ballot initiative that was there that passed to go into their constitution. It was all about, you know, codifying abortion into the constitution all the way up until the time of birth. And when you look at the tens of millions of dollars that flowed into Ohio, most of it was outside the state monies. And so I think that we see the left, uh, the Democrat Party, the progressive socialist left, they want to play that rule as long as they can dictate that rule. But they, I believe, don't want to see that happen for everyone. And we even experienced the Zucker Bucks here in the state of Texas. Luckily, we have a Republican governor, and that was signed into uh, into law. But uh, we'll wait and see if you can drive the turnout Uh, in April to make sure that you can get that put in as a constitutional amendment. Now, when you talk about that becoming a a constitutional amendment, do you have a 60 percent or 60 percent threshold or do you have just a majority threshold for a constitutional amendment in Wisconsin? Just a majority of the voters. Yeah. Well, good, good. I mean, I think that'll be very successful then. So tell us about some of the other things you're looking to do. I mean, other than the outside private funds, which definitely went to uh, advocate the positions of one particular party. Well, it's hard to believe that we're still fighting whether you should show an ID to go vote. That just mm-hmm. blows my mind. Yeah. I have to show an ID uh, for to check into the hotel here in Madison. I have yeah. to show an ID that I am who I am. So you remember we had this conversation where we lost the conservative majority in uh, our Wisconsin Supreme Court in the last yes. election. Uh, Every year that the governor put the Democratic governor that we have puts forth a budget, he wants to eliminate the voter ID requirement. And now we have a liberal Supreme Court that is going to become an activist Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And there also is a move to eliminate the voter uh, ID. So we have another constitutional amendment that we just passed that first consideration, this legislative session, to put that in the Constitution that you have to show an ID in Wisconsin to vote. You know, it's amazing to me because you just brought up something very simple that you have to show an ID to, uh, you know, get your hotel room. And I just took a flight back from Alabama. I had to show my ID in order to uh, check in and to get on that airplane, unless you're an illegal immigrant. It seems that illegal immigrants don't have to have identification (laughs) to get into our airports and get on uh, airplanes. But the the left saying that it is racist and, and it targets minorities uh, for to ask them to have a, a picture ID, to me that is the most offensive and condescending thing because I see plenty of blacks that are getting on Spirit Airlines, Delta Airlines, you name it. I was, flew on America this time. Uh, there's nothing racist about this. What do you think is really at heart when you look at the fact that from out of Texas, we have seen millions of illegal immigrants flooding to this country. Do you really think there is a push that even in Wisconsin, you could see people illegally voting uh, in Wisconsin? Well, yes. And I think that that's the whole purpose. You don't if you don't have to show a voter, ID, if you don't have to show identification, then who is to say who you are? I mean, you could just self-report that you have six different names and show up at a variety of, of polling places to yeah. vote. And it, it just is paramount to me that you should be have to prove who you are to cast a vote. No, that's true. And you were born in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and the governor of Pennsylvania, uh, Shapiro, just recently came out and said that he is going to have universal voting voter registration. So again, at a time when we're allowing millions of people to come into the United States of America illegally, and we know about the Bill Clinton motor voter law. So even if you allow you know people illegally here to get a driver's license, then they're going to come and show up and say, you know, here's my picture ID uh, if I have to prove that. So 
How do we get to the point? How can we make sure that with the influx of illegals that we've had, how can we have proper voter registration roll review? Is that something that you're looking at there in Wisconsin? Well, you know, there's been a big push to get illegal immigrants driver's licenses. And we have fought, we're fighting that battle in Wisconsin. Uh, As you know, green card holders can get a driver's license, Mm -hmm. and there's nothing on that driver's license that says not to be used for voting purposes. So we actually want to initiate something on green card holders' driver's licenses that don't allow that photo ID to be used for voting. So that's one way that we are working on that. The other thing is our third constitutional amendment, because right now in Wisconsin, our state uh, constitution says that every U.S. citizen age 18 or older is considered a qualified elector. We want to change that every to only U.S. citizens Mm vote. Now, you know that there's a big push in some municipalities to allow illegal immigrants to vote in local yes. elections. Yes. This constitutional amendment would prohibit any an illegal immigrant from voting in any election in our state. And again, you know, they're playing the racist card. Yeah. I could not believe that in the opponent's message of this, it says This bill is anti-immigrant. And I wrote underneath that, no, this bill is not anti-immigrant. It is pro-U.S. citizen. And I just, it's amazing to me the mindset that people think that other people other than U.S. citizens should vote in our elections. And it's amazing to me that they don't think you need a photo ID to vote. I, mm-hmm. I just don't understand the thought press, uh, the thought process to what I see as such common sense uh, approach. To well, it, it's, it's about it's about power and control. I mean, you know, I can't just walk across the border into Mexico and expect that I'm going to get a, a free cell phone. I'm going to get a check and I'm going to be allowed to vote in their in their election. So why would we allow that to happen here? And and if you want to go to countries in Europe, I don't think countries in Europe allow that to happen either. But the other thing I want to talk about was we saw all of a sudden because of COVID. And if you go back to April 2020, Eric Holder wrote a piece, I believe, in Time magazine that was talking about how the coronavirus should permanently change elections in the United States. And the crux of his argument was these unsolicited mail in ballots. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think a lot of people have got confused between what an unsolicited mail in ballot is as opposed to an absentee ballot. Right. Are y'all tackling that and looking at that in the state of Wisconsin? Well, I'm not sure we're tackling it. We're talking about it. And I'll just give you a perfect example. In my district, I got some phone calls from people saying, oh, I got six absentee ballots in the mail. And I said to them, would you save me those mailings? I would like to come and look at them. And that's exactly what they were. They were solicitations to make sure that people voted by absentee ballot if they could. And there is a huge effort to confuse people by third party um, people that want you to vote. And and there needs to be education around that, uh, that these are not, although they look a lot like absentee ballots because they're trying to give you an example of what an absentee ballot looks like. But these are third party organizations that Mm -hmm. are sending these mailings out to encourage people to vote absentee. Yeah, it's so important because an absentee ballot, you know, having served in the military, you know, that's a controlled item. I mean, you have to, you know, request for that ballot to be mailed to you. And it's not just, you know, somebody at the supervisor of his elections office, or as you said, some third party, just mailing ballots out there. And it is very confusing. I think it's so important that we control the message and control the language. Uh, Last question on, you know, the whole voting thing is how many days of early voting do you have there in the state of Wisconsin? Two weeks, I believe. Two weeks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you do you think that's fine? Is there any look at maybe condensing that down? Definitely, you know, I don't know if you will expand it. Um, there has been talk from the other side about wanting to expand it. There is no appetite to do so at this time. 
We also have same day registration in Wisconsin, mm. and there's been a lot of talk about whether that is appropriate as well. So there are some discussions about um, maybe pulling back on that, because as you know, there are a lot of states where you have to have a 30 day residency yes. you know, before you vote there. And, yeah. so, uh, you know, I, I believe so strongly that we need to make it as easy for qualified voters to vote, but we yeah. need to make it as hard as we can to make it to be able to cheat. And yes. there's a balance between there because, you know, I've taken advantage of the absentee ballot process because mm -hmm. I've, I've worked as a nurse 12 hour days. I have to be there at seven o'clock. Sometimes I don't get out till eight. So I voted absentee ballot. Sometimes in, I'm in Madison. So I vote, you know, by absentee ballot. So we, we need to make sure that we have that option available for people that cannot go on election day. Uh, one thing that happened during 2020 that really aggravated me was the exploitation of our indefinitely confined status as a voter. Yes. Uh, because I, I, people were led to believe that if you had COVID or you were being isolated for COVID, that you were indefinitely confined. And so people went and voted because, you know, you don't have to show a photo ID when mm -hmm. you uh, vote indefinitely confined. And there were people there was one person running for state Senate that went out and voted indefinitely confined and then went out and knocked on doors for the next three or four weeks. So I think a, a lot of clerks have tried to clean up their indefinitely confined list, but we also passed a bill to tighten up the definition for indefinitely mm -hmm. confined because we don't want that status to be taken advantage of um, just because you don't have to show a voter ID with that. You know, the, you, and that brings up another great point when you talk about indefinitely confined we saw in Racine, Wisconsin, where you had that investigation that was done there by, I believe, a, a former member of your Supreme Court. Uh, and we, we, we were able to see how vulnerable voters, you know, people in senior living facilities and memory care centers, you know, it's hard to get me to believe that 100 percent voter turnout in a memory care center. What have been some of the things that uh, you all have looked at in Wisconsin? And, and that's why we really reinforced our uh, Protect Vulnerable Voters program here at the ACRU. What are some of the things that you're looking to do to rectify that situation that was uncovered uh, in out of racing Wisconsin? Well, you know that the special voting deputies were not allowed to go into the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And so that, to me, just opened up a huge Pandora's box because then anybody could help somebody fill out a an absentee ballot. So we have we are passing a bill so that you cannot keep special voting deputies to assist people in uh, nursing homes and other uh, places where people are confined. Uh, we tightened up that language for that. The other thing we did is that we we do not want people in our nursing homes exploited. And yeah. there was some discussion that nursing home people were exploited during that and maybe voted a certain way. And who knows what happened? It was very, very difficult. So we also have tightened up the nursing home voting so that uh, there's a, a less of a probability that those residents are going to be exploited in future elections. Well, good. You know, when you look at some of the lessons learned and some of the things that you all have done there in Wisconsin, what would you like to share with people that are watching this uh, so that they can put pressure on maybe some of their state legislatures to start, you know, correcting and start tightening up their processes and procedures as we get ready to head into this 2024 election cycle? Well, I think that the first thing that we can do is elect people of integrity as our clerks. In Wisconsin, we have um, a system where the county clerks are in charge of running the elections. So we need to make sure that there are people of integrity elected to those positions and then have 
have them make sure they know what election laws are. Mm -hmm. I repeat again, we want every eligible voter in our state to be able to vote. We do not want to disenfranchise voters. Another bill that we passed was in Milwaukee, they closed like 75% of the polling places in April of 2020. We had people waiting in line six, seven, eight hours to vote. Mm -hmm. People would show up at a poll and transportation is an issue for some of our people. They were told to go five miles to go vote somewhere else. Up, You talk about the ultimate disadvantage, you know, disenfranchising voters. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that that your clerks are following the law. You need to make sure that there are election laws in place that don't disenfranchise any eligible voter to be able to vote. I also encourage people, if you know of somebody that can't get to the polls, be offer to take them to the polls. Do whatever you can to help people vote in elections and then work closely with your state legislature to make sure that you have unambiguous laws and that nothing is left to the um, interpretation of the person reading that law that would uh, compromise the integrity of the legislative intent. What would you say is the most shocking and surprising thing that you have seen in your time? You were just elected in uh, 2020 in your tenure there in the Wisconsin State Assembly. So this is the second term that I've been on the Campaigns and Elections Committee. We had somebody come and testify about some of the improprieties and shenanigans that went on in the state of Wisconsin. And that individual said, and it was particularly with these Zuckerberg bucks where I know some shenanigans occurred. And that individual said to our committee, make no doubt about it. They didn't care about your election laws because the end justified the means for them. That was so shocking to me for somebody to say they didn't care about your election laws. They 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 absolutely did not give a damn is actually what he yeah, said. Yeah. But um but for them, the end justified the means. And so all those Zucker bucks that came into those five cities to target, I believe, Democrat voters, um, they didn't even care if they broke any of our election laws. The end for them justified the means. And so that was shocking to me that there is that much, and you said the word power and control. There's such a desire to have power and control that there are people out there that don't care about our laws. Well, I mean, it's interesting that you say that because that's one of the principles and philosophies of Karl Marx is that the ends justify the means. And mm -hmm. we also know that it is attributed to Joseph Stalin, who once said it is not the person that counts the, uh, that casts the vote that matters, it's the person that counts the vote that truly does matter. So going into this 2024 election cycle, Wisconsin is so important how do we get the message into these major urban population centers where I believe you see the greatest amount of failure of leftist policies? Well, I think we have to educate and thank you for what you are doing to try to educate. I think the other thing we need to do is poll watchers. We need mm. to activate people to get into the polls, to watch what's going on. We did pass a bill that allows election observers to be a little closer so that they can watch what's going on. And I just can't emphasize enough how important it is for good people to be involved at the local level. You know, all politics is local. You've That's heard right. that before too. And so those of us that care about this subject, we need to start getting involved and not be so lackadaisical that somebody else is going to do it. And, and I will tell you, one of the things that I always push is that veterans need to be out there as poll watchers and poll workers, because mm -hmm. I'm going to be very honest, too often we have nice little ladies, they're in these positions, and they get bullied. 
because as you just articulated, the other side believes by any means necessary. So we need to make sure that we have strong individuals there that cannot be bullied, cannot be pushed aside, and they do know the right processes and procedures and election laws and what have you. Final closing moments, Representative Rosar, uh, what would you like to share with the viewers here on Live Free TV? I would like to share that we need to be more involved. Uh, I, I think that people, because of the possible harassment, because of how difficult things seem, good people are not involved anymore in the political process. And I wish that I could do something to encourage every caring American to get involved in your school board, you know, Senator Johnson, who you may have talked to, this is his big thing. You've got to get involved locally. I've been in a local, a local elected official for 23 years, and that's what got me involved in the state legislature. We have to have more people that show up at meetings, that voice their concerns, that get involved, um, run for local office, do things that make a difference in your community because those lo that local involvement then will work its way up to uh, state and maybe even federal involvement. So I just encourage people to educate themselves and to get involved. Now, you're absolutely right. It was Tip O'Neill who said all politics are local, and that's one of the things that we push here at the American Constitutional Rights Union, live free local, get out there and get uh, engaged in city council election. Elections, uh, school board elections, county commission elections, sheriff races, and as you are already articulated, county clerk and supervisor of election races. Those are so yeah. important. Representative Donna Rosar from Wisconsin, how can people follow you? How can people stay in touch with you and see all the great work that you're doing? Well, I um, am on, obviously, we have a uh, a Facebook page. We have an e-update that we put out every Friday and my staff uh, who are wonderful are willing to answer any questions of anybody that calls my office and uh, we just want to be available to serve the people that we represent. And I want to thank you for allowing me to come and sit down with you during my visit up there in Wisconsin. It was a great visit, and I want us to continue to stay in touch. And I just thank you for all the right, the good work that you're doing there. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday, okay? Yes, ma'am. Happy Thanksgiving. And thank you again for being with us at Live Free TV. You're welcome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this episode of Live Free TV. You can find us at theacru.org. Again, that's theacru.org. And learn more about the initiatives that we have here, such as election integrity and protecting vulnerable voters to make sure that your life, your liberty, your property, your pursuit of happiness, your constitutional liberties are always protected and you can indeed live free. God bless. Thank you.